Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. I'm out here in the garage with my 1999 Pontiac Grand Am SE uh, with the four cylinder that I rebuilt. Um, this has become my daily driver and I really want to have the remote keyless entry, the little key fobs. Uh, this car came from the factory without that option and I would like to add that option in a factory way, not an aftermarket kit but actually do it through the body control module as it would have been done from the factory. So we're going to attempt to do that and whether we succeed or we fail I'm going to put this video up and let you see what happens. All right, so we've got a module, we've got a car. We're gonna see if we can make the two talk to each other. Hey, if you like videos like this, make sure you leave me a thumbs up and go down and click that subscribe button so that you can see videos like this all the time as I release them. So I went digging through the junkyard for a few hours and I finally came across what I believe is the right module. This module actually came out of a 2003 Oldsmobile Alero. Um, just trying to find something as close to the year as I could that had this option installed. It was pretty slim pickings at the junkyard, uh, but I did eventually find it. Uh, the little plastic tabs that hold this on are broke off, but we'll stick it in there with some double-sided sticky tape if it works. So, um, you know, we've got this connector. I don't know for sure if this connector's pre-installed on the wiring harness and just hanging out, or if we'll have to wire this guy in. Um, but we're just going to go through it, and we're going to test it. And so I'm going to go ahead and just do a tech cutaway to kind of go through the wiring diagrams and what my actual process is going to be. All right, so we want to install an RFA module. And so uh, someone commented on my last video that the code is AU0, which I, I kind of laughed because I, I finally found that RPO code after much looking around. But uh, if you look uh, on a tag back by the spare tire, like you lift up that spare tire flap in the trunk on the bottom of the sticker, and you should see an RPO code for AU0, which is keyless entry. Um, and mine does not have that. So the RFA module, when installed, lives here on the rear deck. Um, and we have the trunk light right here, and this module clicks in right here. This connector is kind of wrong. It doesn't have that many wires. It's got three wires going to it. Um, and I think they show the key, the remotes that are joined to it on a little strap here. Like maybe that's how they uh, install them originally or something. Um, of course, we know we're going to program some new key fobs. Uh, so uh, this is just another wiring diagram that kind of shows the RFA module location back in here as well as the different you know connector locations so how is this guy actually wired up right is how does it talk to the body control module or whatever so there is a purple wire and this is on the class 2 LAN um, so or the class 2 serial so this class 2 serial um, it you know goes between the modules in the car so they can talk to each other and it's just a single wire um, and it's a purple wire. Now, we're going to find out when we tear the rear deck out if the connector is actually pre-installed or not. I can't remember if I saw it or not. I thought I saw something, but I'm not 100% sure. And one of the reasons is when I went to tear uh, a module out of another 99 Grand Am, it turned out it also did not have the option and did not have the module, and I didn't see a connector on that one. So now I'm questioning if I saw one. Uh, but anyway we'll have to get a wire and tie it into the class 2 LAN at some point somewhere um, and it just needs to be spliced in there and spliced in well in a location that's accessible to troubleshoot in the future um, 
But this purple wire actually runs back up to the left hand IP junction block, which is up under the hood there, I believe. Um, and that's fine. Um, and then you see here where it says data link connector, you'll see these notes uh, called like cell 50 in the old diagrams. And that's just referring to a section in the OEM service manual that would explain the data link connector. It's not a you know, it's not a reference to any other part of the wiring diagram. And so the only other thing we have is a hot wire, a positive battery voltage, and a ground. And so there's already plenty of hot wires coming back there for the trunk relay, trunk light, trunk or er, er, trunk motor, all that. There are some full-time hots coming back there. In fact, we can see the trunk relay, RFA, and radio amp all come off of this, uh, or RDO amp, I'm assuming that's a radio amp option they all come off the same 10 amp fuse so we should just be able to go to our trunk relay power and uh, pull that same 10 amps off you know pull that same power off there to feed our um, RDA or this can be called RDA RFA remote control door lock receiver and they use those terms interchangeably in the diagrams and the documentation if you're looking for this and so once this is installed and it's on the class 2 serial network we then just have to go into the body control module and add the RPO code for uh, keyless entry and once that RPO code is added boom it should start communicating with this guy and then we can go program key fobs um, and so here just to show you what we're going to do is go ahead and tie in temporarily with a junction box I have an OBD2 breakout box uh, with banana jacks and so I can tie into the serial data right here on pen 2 you see wire color purple and that's the speed so uh, this car has what they call uh, serial data it's class B uh, sometimes this was called high speed back in the day because it's 10 400 baud um, that's nothing compared to like the GM LAN and high speed can and all that stuff of today this car did not have that uh, but it does still have the old UART. This is the old slow UART. UART used to be slower than that, but now this UART's 8192 baud. Uh, so some things still may communicate on UART, uh, but a lot of stuff on this will communicate on the uh, class two. Um, so we can just jumper out of this box to the purple wire on this module, give it power, give it ground, and see if it'll program it and accept it. All right, so here's what we have going on I've got my breakout box and then in pin 2 that's running over to the purple wire and then I've got a ground coming right off of my door here it's a good ground I checked with the test light and then I got a positive running back up to the battery and the batteries under here <laughs> I've got my battery maintainer running so that I don't uh, have any fluctuations in voltages while I'm doing module stuff and it keeps the battery from going dead because this car likes to have the headlights on with the key on. I've got my uh, Tech 2 fired up. I'm running through my GM MDI 2. And of course this little breakout box. It plugs into the OBD2 and then it has another cable coming out to hook up your scan tool through. Uh, this is a real generic one from eBay. It does not have the little lights that flash like the fancier ones. but it gets the job done and it's fifteen dollars um, so we'll go in here and see if we can get this to program alright so let's go for a ride together because I haven't done this before so I believe you go to diagnostics uh, you go down to 1999 and we go to passenger car and we go to body and then we select N which is our fourth digit on the VIN and we say it's a Pontiac then there should be body function controller, special functions. Oh, I don't see RPO codes there. Hmm, I thought that's where it was going to be. Let's see. Let me let me back out of here.
But I guess one thing we could do is let's just go here and see if we're seeing anything on the bus. If I do remote function actuation. Yeah, I do a data display. Module information. It's clicking. It's trying to establish. Holy crap. I didn't even have to put in the RPO code. It, was like, it just saw it. How sweet is that? I figured I'd have to go into the body control module and install the RPO code. But I guess not. So let's go back out of here. Special functions, program key fobs. Let's just do one key fob for now. And then let's do continue. Simultaneously. Oh, sweet. Key files were programmed successfully. Exit. So now, the question is, let me go ahead and turn the ignition off. So I'm able to see the module and program it, but I think maybe the body control module is still not supporting it. If I put this, all door unlock. Door lock. Trunk release. So the module is definitely communicating now, but I don't think the body control module is. Uh, happy yep. let's see if there's any DTC codes in here current codes no trouble codes historic codes no so let's see if there's maybe a U code in the body control module saying like, hey, there's this other module on the bus and it's not supposed to be here. No cope, no trouble codes. Huh. Okay, I'm going to do a little poking around and see what information I can find. But it looks like the key fob is communicating with that module. It's on the bus. I'm seeing data from it now. But it looks like maybe the body control module is not accepting that. So i got to figure out if I need to add an RPO code to this body control module and how to do it. Alright, so no real luck. The scan tool will talk to the module. Um, of course, it's just talking to it right on class 2 directly, I imagine. It's not going through anything. So, uh, we can do a data display, key fob information. And, you know, I can hit the uh, unlock, driver door unlock, hit it twice, all door unlock, uh, door lock. It doesn't, I don't, oh, there's trunk. Fuel door or alarm. So this is actually alarm because it don't have a fuel door. But so it's not talking to the BCM. Um, I don't see anywhere where I can put the RPO codes in this BCM. So this might be back in the day when the stuff was still hard coded in the BCM on the prom and it wasn't programmable. Like you couldn't change that. Um, so that might mean a need to replace the BCM. Um, or it might just be that this module isn't quite compatible with this BCM. They are from different years. So we'll do a little bit more research and maybe uh, go on eBay or somewhere and try to find an actual 1999 uh, RFA module. Um, I believe all data gave me the actual part number, the GM part number for that. Um, so maybe. I'll just try to find one from this exact year with that exact part number, and then we'll try that. So the saga continues. All right, so from what I'm reading, 
uh, to program the options or the software on that BCM on this far back of a year. I think even if I was up like 2002 inch, um, I could go set the RPO codes on it. But I don't know at what exact point that changer was, but in 99 for sure, you have to use um, the Tech 2000, is what it looks like in its software. It runs on Windows XP and it uses an actual Tech 2 as a pass through via the serial port to be able to go in and program that. Uh, so I don't have an actual real tech 2 or even a clone of a real tech 2 I just have the tech to win so there's no way to actually get that to like emulate a serial port and let me run tech 2000 through it or anything like that so probably what I'm going to end up doing is just holding off on this until I can actually get a, a real tech 2 or a real clone tech 2 or find somebody with a tech 2 <laughs> let me use it um, I know that I've set body control options on like a 2003 um, and set the RPO codes and so you just go to special functions and there will be like RPO programming and you can go in there and turn on the different options uh, but that's not happening on this one so I think even as we just got like for 2003 4 we start seeing CAN bus we just started seeing a lot of changes and this is just before those changes happened so it's a real learning experience and a fun project anyway uh, to, to be able to get that to communicate on the class 2 through the OBD2 and, and, and see it communicate and program key fobs. But it's just not, the body control module is not going to recognize it until it would be told that it should, should recognize it. So if I get a tech 2 or I get access to one, I'll definitely go back into this and play with it and see if I can make it work but I'm probably just gonna set this project on the shelf for now and you know I'll either if I, if I just have to have keyless entry I'll add an aftermarket and chop up some wiring but I would kinda of like to just make it work like it would from the factory if for nothing else just a learning experience um, so we'll see what happens I got my car put back together for now so I can go to work tomorrow and uh, hey it was a fun time I'll talk to y'all later this is Tom your frugal prepper